So I've got my blue driver uh, code reader connected. You see the blue light on. And now we're going to get the uh, readout for it. Uh, so we got to connect it by Bluetooth. And we'll do that. And then we'll start getting readings. So there is a fuse in the fuse box here inside the car. See if we can get a shot of it. It's the first yellow one on the left. It's a 20 amp fuse on the second row there. Um, see if you can see all rows, there's three of them. But the first yellow one on the left is the LAF heater fuse it's a 20 amp be sure and check that because if that doesn't get the airflow sensor up to temperature that fuse could be bad and it could be giving you this code check that one it's good so now I bought the airflow sensor uh, it's an O2 sensor on the uh, catalytic converter get ready to jack the car up and uh, get under there there's a jack point at the center of the car in the front show you where that location is there's an arrow right here showing it and the, this frame point is right there where you see my jack stand I'm gonna jack it up and I'm gonna put jack stands under it to, for safety prior to jacking up the car I uh, chopped the wheels with some bricks so that it won't Roll and also put the emergency brake on. Okay, there's reinforced locations as you can see right here at the front of the car where I'm placing this jack stand, and that'll allow you to get under there uh, with safety in mind instead of uh, just relying on a hydraulic jack. So, got both jack stands under there, you can lift the the hydro take the hydraulic jack off of it and we should be good and ready to get oh, in there from AutoZone I got the denser denso air fuel sensor uh, this sensor pretty expensive one 160 dollars plus tax 173 dollars so I sure hope this is to fix because uh, that's what it's pointing me to if there's anything else uh, so we a lot more money also when you change one of these you need to get the O2 sensor socket wrenches this is a loaner tool from uh, from AutoZone and that's also the price for the one at AutoZone the, the O2 sensor they give you a, a deposit fee of 30 bucks uh, when you finish with it you take it back get your 30 bucks back so gonna get started this uh, set here, it comes with three different uh, O2 sensor removal tools. They're slotted so you can get it around the cable. This one is a long one. It's a 3 8 inch drive. Then we got this short one. Same thing, slotted. It's got a 3 8 inch drive. And this one has kind of a star drive, but it will fit a half inch drive so I'm using this tool just for the simple fact that you might need a breaker bar I've got a half inch breaker bar so get it in there uh, take it loose and uh, replace the other one just be sure and put some dielectric grease on there when you put it back so it won't be so hard to remove the next time if you have to ever change it again um, the O2 sensor comes with a little packet of dielectric grease, so you should be good with that. Only needs a little bit. Um, so get ready to go underneath. In here you have this bracket that holds the O2 sensor uh, connectors. That's a 10 millimeter bolt. Just get a 10 meter uh, socket. 
comes off real easy. The little nipple there is just to hold it in place uh, correctly. And then you have your and you have your bank one sensor one. Uh, this is the one we need to change. Uh, it just screws right in there. I put that breaker bar right on there and pop it out. Okay, I've changed it out with the, the new sensor. You can see there, uh, nice and shiny. Don't forget to put the dielectric grease in there. Tighten it in. It's got a lock washer type of thing. So once you get in there tight, the uh, lock washer is kind of a, like a pressure pressured lock. So once it's in there tight, it'll hold pressure against it and hold it in place goes on up here to the wiring these cable things they they've got a little notch on the side of them I can show you on the old one that they just slide in to a little thing and snap on and then there's also a release to take them apart it's best to take them apart when you're unscrewing the uh, O2 sensor so the the wire can spin without doing it any damage so here's that old one that piece at the top where my finger is, that's where it just slides onto the bracket and it snaps in and holds it. It's pretty easy to pull off. It's got this little pressure thing that you push down when it's snapped in place. And uh, you push that down and it releases it from the latch on the bracket that holds it in place. And then these are keyed. When you remove it, there's a little... Um, piece on the part that's attached there on the cable and you pull that up and this little notch here the little lever will allow you to pull this out once you uh, take that apart this doesn't look very old I've cleared the uh, cleared the codes uh, hopefully this has done it the code comes back pretty immediately when I'm driving. So we're gonna see. I wasn't getting any signal from this. Uh, I think I took some graphs of it earlier for you. And I will uh, take some more live, live reading graphs with my Blue Driver uh, diagnostic tool. I'm starting to like that tool, it's got a lot of information. And it, um, it provides a lot of feedback and you can get uh, help from actual mechanics that uh, send you information. It's all done by email. It may take a day or two to turn around. But when you're trying to save some money, you can wait a day. Well, the check engine light usually came on pretty quick after uh, after clearing the codes. So it looks like the O2 sensor may have fixed the problem. Uh, it was giving no feedback to the engine, I mean to the ECU. So it looks like we may have a fix. $200 part, which was a little bit cheaper. But do what we got to do.